unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word.
There is healing tonight, there is deliverance tonight, there is answered prayer tonight.
thank you for your presence.
If you're sick of anything, that's why it's hurting. That's why it's hurting. That's why it's hurting. That's why it's hurting. I feel the presence of God that is available to heal. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody you came with a very bad back pain. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody came with a pain in your jaw. God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody came with a blood disease. I pray you go for a checkup in the name of Jesus. Somebody has had a cancer scare, but God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Doctors say that what they see looks like cancer. God is healing you right this very moment in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have arthritis, receive your healing right now. Arthritis. I see the spirit of arthritis departing off somebody right now. You spirit of arthritis, go in the name of Jesus Christ. I command those joints to get in order and in line. Somebody with a very bad stomach issue, God is healing you now. In the name of Jesus. An infection in the nose. You came with a very bad pain, an infection in the nose. God is healing you right now. If it's the deaf ear, it will hear. If it's a blind eye, it will see. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing on your body. I speak healing on your body. I speak healing on your body. There's somebody you've spent about two years without a job. God is getting you one these coming few days. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that you're not going to struggle. I rebuke and bind and destroy every spirit of struggle. In the name of Jesus. There's somebody here. For a few days you have not been able to sleep. In fact, come, I want to lay hands on you. You've lost sleep lately. You don't have sleep. Come. I want to lay hands on you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. The presence of God is here. Come quickly. Give me your hand. In the name of Jesus. He grants sleep to them. He loves. Thank you, Lord. There's a lady. Yes. I was looking for you. Give me your hand right here. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been tormenting you, God torments it. Receive your deliverance from today you will sleep I also rebuke and bind and destroy that spirit of confusion I command it to lose you right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord Jesus This is death I see. You spirit of death, I command you to leave this woman now. Get out of her. Get out of her. You will not die. You will leave. Every form of witchcraft, I frustrate it from the root in the name of Jesus Christ. And God tells me to tell you, you will not struggle. These hands are free from today. They 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 are free from today. Every form of loss is frustrated from the root. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I need you, my 
receive it. Receive it. delivered in the name of Jesus. Be 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 delivered in the name of Jesus. Brother, I even feel besides what you're going through, I also feel like there's a disease trying to attack your heart. Your heart is not healthy. It has been pumping up normally. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? How long has it been? How long has it been? Two years. Somebody stretch your hands towards this man. There's a heart disease that I, I see. Cast it out of his body. Right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke and bind and destroy that spirit of infirmity and disease. We speak healing. We decree that you will not die. You will leave in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be healed. You spirit of destruction, I command you to lose her now. In Jesus' mighty name, be delivered. Be delivered. It is done. It is done. It is done. I'm not, I cannot do that when I'm going to preach. Father, in the name of Jesus, we send healing to this woman's heart. We send healing to that body. We speak restoration of our heart in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I pray for her. I pray for her. Somebody give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. There are some people with, you may be seated. Some people with a few testimonies. I don't know that will give them an opportunity to testify. Should I or shouldn't I? Tell me, time. Should I give them an opportunity or not? Answer me. Five minutes only. Eh? If the Lord has healed you, come. There are also two or three people who told me they had testimonies. Come quickly, quickly, quickly. Five minutes only, five minutes only. Because I need to start preaching. Clap for the choir. We welcome all the men and women of God in the house. Pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets. Mr. Opros, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Come quickly. There are some people who have testimonies. Come quickly. How many of you have been healed? Put up your hands. Put up straight. Can you stand up so, th so the devil can see what God has done for you? You've been healed. Look at all that. Look at all that. Now, if I give each one of those an opportunity to testify, we might sleep here. Praise the Lord. Hey, huh? tell us. If, if yours is burning, come. I'll give you like three or four people. If you feel, hey, God has healed you of something major, come quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I'll give you just five minutes only. I want to start preaching. It is burning me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hurry, hurry. Uh, praise God. Yes. I'm called Charity. Charity. I've come to testify for my mother. Mm. Uh, before night of prayer, I think it was two days before, I called her to get ready for, because her healing was going to manifest. What was she suffering from? Yeah, she was suffering from fibroids. Fibroids. She had an eye problem. Eye problem. She had a back problem. Back problem. Joint problem. Joint problem. And then her legs would swell. And swollen legs. Yes. Uh -huh. So I called her after night of prayer and she told me she was completely fine. Up to now she's 100% healed. Yeah, she's fine. Somebody clap for Jesus. Testify very quickly. I've been suffering from insomnia. Insomnia. Yeah, as a result of my depression, lack of sleep. Mm. Um, you called out. I moved out here. I feel 
not even feeling, but I'm healed. You feel healed. I'm, I'm, I'm not just feeling, but I'm healed. You are healed. Yeah. Somebody clap for Jesus. I'm going to sleep. Tonight I'm going to sleep. Amen. Now they are going to be waking you up quickly. Time. If you have a burning one, come. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I've been having headache for seven years. He- headache? Headache. Headache for seven years. Headache. Seven years. Yeah. You came with it. Yeah. So when you told us if you are feeling pain, touch yeah, like the place where you are feeling the pain, the moment I touched my head like this, instantly. This instantly. Place. Seven years. Somebody clap for Jesus. God bless you, sir. And it shall be no more in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the name of God, Nashia Mazaha. First, and the Narini name is in the Jinta Wanyanga Jijilo, Nejinko the Sanga Vasaja, Nature and Anga Jinjo Gazanim is the Simani Goru Nyanko, Eruswai, Gatobi Mani, Gasizi Mani. Wait, let me translate this. <laughs> The demons that used to attack her, number one, they would make her speak languages she doesn't, she has never spoken before. No, Swahili. And yet she, she didn't know the languages. But when the demons get on her, she speaks the languages. And they used to use her as men. They were male spirits, right? By the way, I'm going to pray for some people here. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. Uh-huh. Now, Kuvai Naja and Uninam Kwano Gangabamuita Debi, Ye Ambulira Kunti Walua Pastor Apostle Grace. Are you? So, from the time she came here, and they told her there was a man of God called Apostle Grace. Naso Kananda Gakao, a testimony, Kamu. Nancy Kiriza Nanga Bachira, Kakola Kuvana in a tumble at Dambasao. She went to which doctors, shakes, and she could not get deliverance. Uh-huh. Then she said she would come and try to see whether it would work here. It was the last Thursday when we were up there. The, the demons attacked me and I started rolling on the floor like a snake. And they took me behind. From that day. Oh! <laughs> From that day, they've never attacked her again. Somebody come for Jesus. Walokoka. Nyabu. Mama, walokoka. Mukame eva zimwe. Akukoze sick. I'm going to pray for some people. The Spirit of God has told me to pray. There are women here, you might not come out, but you have also been used by these spirits. In fact, there is somebody on my left. Eh? You're a lady. This spirit, a male spirit, has been using you for some time. And a few weeks ago, you developed a very funny pain in your lower abdomen. After those, there were dreams, and then you've been now having something here, like this. If you don't fear, come. Praise God, church. My name is Ambrose. When I came here, I had a headache. I felt like somebody was nailing a nail inside my head. But now I really feel I'm okay. Very okay. Somebody clap for Jesus. Amen. Amenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenamenam
if you, you are that woman, eh? Praise God. Mm-hmm. My name is Lillian, and um, around uh, the 27th of uh, December, I went for a, a, a body checkup. I, I wasn't that. feeling so well, and I was told that I, they suspected that I had cancer. They told me that I had sarcoma, kaposi, and um, I was supposed to start chemo immediately. But when I came back, I told Papa about it, and uh, he prayed for me. And I underwent a series of tests last week, and they found that all my organs were well. They only found like, like I, I had like something at the bottom of my lungs, and uh, they suspected it was pneumonia. So they said that they had to uh, carry out a, a test called bronchoscopy to find out if I really have the cancer. That's when I realized that they were just speculating, and I was like, I do not want any foreign object to be inserted down my throat, and I do not want to undergo chemo. So on Monday, I went to, I went to the doctor, and she told me that we are not going to, we are not going to put you on chemo for now. And I thank God because I know it's not there. I, I, I just, I'm just so thankful to God. All right, put up your hands. Somebody stretch your hands towards her right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Cancer, you're no more. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You have a testimony? Oh. Eh? The ladies, I pro- come, come, come here, come here. You also have the same issue. You had dreams, then you got an attack here. You were the one who was seated the other side. Even you. Even the pains are there too. Okay, there is also another one. I don't know whether you'll come, but I know you. The Lord has showed me. You're, you were in a relationship. You heard about two dreams of these things using you. And that relationship died. And he was supposed, he had promised that the two of you were getting serious into a commitment. But you had dreams, two of them. And then you go back to when you started falling out of the relationship and misunderstanding each other. It came after those two dreams. He started becoming fun and the relationship ended. It's Where is she? Are you the one? Eh? You're the one, eh? Even you. You are in a relationship. Eh, okay. For you, the, you, they came. But you're the one with the relationship. Two dreams and then he, the relationship started getting affected. Is it true? Speak louder. Is it true? Is it true? Give her the mic. Is it true? Speak louder. It's true. Okay. This is what God tells me to tell you. Don't look for him. He's going to come back. He is going to come back. Give me your hand. Now, those things that come at night as spiritual husbands, they're not supposed to be your portion. And we are going to separate you from them today. There is somebody who has stayed. Don't worry. The power is coming there. Right now in the name of Jesus. Go! And never should you come back again in her life. Give me your hand. Right now I separate you from that fellow. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to lose you right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Lose her. Lose her. Give me your hand. You spirit. I command you right now, lose her, lose her, lose her, lose her. Give me your hand. You spirit, I separate you from this. In fact, what I see was an attack. What I see more in your life, I see that you are going to have trouble having children. But right now in the name of Jesus, go! And never should you come back again, devil. Give me your hand. Right now in the name of Jesus. God delivers you. God delivers you. God delivers you. You spirit, I command you to lose her now. Go! In Jesus' mighty name. 
I command you right now in the name of Jesus, be separated from that spirit right now. In fact, what I sense about you, it had put something like a funny kind of rejection where people falsely accuse you of things that you have not done. Am I making sense? Huh? Speak louder. Yes. But God is delivering you. What was rejection is going to become favor. Power of the Holy Ghost! In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Give me your hand. Give me your hand. Thank you, Lord. God, deliver her right now. Deliver her right now. You spirit, I command you to lose her. I also see something in your back. What is wrong with your back? Tell me. You fell down. Speak louder. I fell down and it pains me so much. Okay, but all right, I understand. But I see this back problem is not just falling down and paining. I see that this, there was a, it's like a demon spirit. It was intending to, 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 to frustrate you. It's a spirit of frustration. It was beginning with the back, but it was going to start creating many, many funny, funny things around you, eh? That were going to be frustrating many things surrounding your life. Particularly your finances were going to be very, very affected. And uh, I also feel that some days ago, there was a I don't know how many days ago, but there was a time not far from now, you were feeling body weakness, eh? Like as if you're going to, you're falling sick, but you didn't know what was happening. Is it true? Yes, yes, it's true. When was that? It was last week. Yeah. Somebody stretch your hands towards this woman. In the name of Jesus, God reveals to redeem. Be healed. Oh my God. Help her. Lastly, you. Let me come here. Where do you go to school? Do you go to school? Do you want to go to school? When do you want to go to school? God tells me he's going to open a door. He's going to open a door. There is a blessing there for you. A big, big blessing there for you. A very big blessing for you. Which class have you, did you end or something? Senior four. Senior four. God tells me he's going to take you back to school. He's going to take you back to school. And I see you're going to do something also in line with journalism too. Is that what you've been believing God for? Or you didn't know yet? I didn't know yet. But don't worry, you're going to do something there. Somebody stretch your hands towards this woman. Right now in the name of Jesus, be delivered from any form and spirit of struggle. God delivers you right now. Power of the Holy Ghost! Somebody clap for Jesus. Can I start preaching? Now, I might have not mentioned you. Hey, there's also some people who have stayed there, but you know you've been having those dreams. Eh? Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing that sets you free. This very moment, God is separating you from those spiritual husbands. They are not supposed to be yours. Your marriage will not be affected. Your relationships will not be affected in the name of Jesus. There's another person also somewhere in the back there. God is delivering you. I hear a name like Eve. Eve. The other one. Eve. Yes, God is delivering you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. He's separating you from that spirit. It is not your portion. It is no more. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 There is somebody. There is a lady. You had closed your shop. Just two, about two weeks ago. The landlord has been on your case. You have failed to pay. I want to pray for you. Come. Come. You have closed your shop. Your shop. Your business. You closed it. Because the, the landlord is on your case and you failed, the business has stalled. I want to pray for you, if you're that person. Put up your hands. You spirit of poverty, 
You are no longer her portion. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. And never should it be hard anymore. It's done. Clap for Jesus. It's done. That shop is going to open. It's going to open. It's going to open. Whether the devil wants it or not. Somebody say, I am rich. Somebody say, I'm blessed. In the name of Jesus. Where do you live? Mutungo. God tells me you're supposed to be living Mutungo. You're not supposed to be living there. Who do you live with? Your husband. The two of you. God is going to move you away. To a better place. To a better place. To a better place. I see where you're living. You're not supposed to be living there. You're going to leave. Don't worry. The shop is going to open too. But you're going to leave that place. Prepare. Move before March. The money is going to come. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give me your hand. In the name of Jesus, we open that business by reason of the anointing. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody clap for Jesus. Let me start preaching. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is power, power, one word in power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, one work in power, in the precious blood of the Lamb. Somebody say, I believe tonight, God is doing something for me. I believe tonight God is doing something in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me speak upon your life that you're not living the way you came. I decree and I declare that something is going to come out of my spirit which is of God and it's going to change you from one level to another level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. There is somebody on my left. You have had a very bad running stomach it has failed to stop for three days now but tonight is to stop it praise God what I see was just more than a running stomach I see a very serious affliction that was trying to attack your stomach and it was going to cost you a lot of money in fact, that particular person, you've also been having something like an ulcer, something like ulcers. But God is delivering you now. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody clap for Jesus. You see, I always tell people, when healing is moving, eh? when the anointing of healing is moving, put your need to there. It's the same anointing. What heals disease? can get you a job, can deliver you. Praise the Lord. What does one thing does another? Why? Because he's the same spirit. Somebody say amen. Say amen. Romans chapter 4. I pray you catch this. Verses 2. The Bible says, the Bible says, for if Abraham were justified by faith, sorry, by works, he has Whereof to glory, but not before God. I repeat that that portion of scripture. He says, for if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Help me with that feedback. Next verse. He says, for what saith the scriptures? Thank you, I'm good now. For what saith the scripture? Abraham, the Bible says, believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. I'm going to begin again from where he began from. He says, for if Abraham, begin from verse 2, he says, for if Abraham were justified by works, that means that if Abraham was made right by what he used to do, then he has where off to glory, but not before God. That means that if he thinks that his works is what put him where he is, then he has something to glory of but not before God. Because him and God know 
that it only took God for him to be somewhere. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now the next verse says, For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So what made him righteous? By believing on God. Next verse. Now he says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. That means that if what you have, you have worked with your own hands, then it's a debt to God to pay you not of grace. But if you're conscious that what you have and what is happening in your life was not out of your works, then you, God is not indebted to pay you, but you ascribe to the truth that it is His grace that has gotten you where you are. Now the Bible says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith, the Bible says, is counted for righteousness. And the next verse says, saying, okay, his faith, let's go back, that, verse 5, right? His faith, huh? come on. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 6 says, even, listen, as David also describeth the blessedness, somebody said blessedness, <laughs> of that man, and to whom the Lord imputeth righteousness without works. David says that the man who God imputes righteousness without doing anything, he says that man is blessed. He doesn't need to fast. He's already blessed. He doesn't need to pray. He's already blessed. It doesn't mean that prayer doesn't have its place in that man's life. It doesn't mean that fasting doesn't have its place in that man's life. It only means that whether he fasts or he doesn't fast, he is the blessed of the Lord. Whether he prays or he doesn't pray, he is the blessed of the Lord. Whether he spends 20 days on the mountain or not 20 days on the mountain, he is the blessed of the Lord. Whether he has a wonderful education or he doesn't have a wonderful education, he is the blessed of the Lord. Whether he has connections and networks or he doesn't have connections and networks, he is the blessed of the Lord. Whether he knows people in high places or he doesn't know people in high places, he is the blessed of the Lord. That man will not function on the peril of merit. That man will function on the peril of blessing. When you function on the peril of blessing, even if you're not the best at it, they will choose you. Even if you're not the wisest there is, they will still choose you. Even if you're not the smartest there is, they'll still choose you. Oh, women, even if you're not the most beautiful, when you're blessed of God, they'll still choose you. He says, the race is not to the swift, neither the battle to the strong, neither bread to the men of skill. But he says, time and chance happens to them. The greatest opportunity of time and chance was the impartation of the blessedness of the free gift of righteousness. Some people take it for granted. How powerful the free gift of life is. God has promised that the moment you receive righteousness imputed in your spirit by faith, you're blessed. Are you hearing me? People don't know the power there is in the blessing on a man's life because he has received righteousness. David says that blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputes righteousness without works. That man is blessed because God does not ascribe his, that man's abilities and, and rightness based on what he has done. He ascribes that man's ability and rightness based on his ability and rightness. He says the moment you start thinking like that, blessings start to follow you. The moment you start to carry a conscious spirit that I am not on my performance, I'm on the performance of God, He will shock you what He can do. Every time you flip back in your performance and your ability, God will surely prove that you cannot. 
Many people are struggling and they are failing to get to places in God. They are failing to get to places financially. They are failing to get to places of settling. They are failing in marriages. They are failing in relationships. They are failing in businesses. Why? Because every time they sit in this thing, they get their consciousness of what they can do. Every time they sit in that thing, they are always awakened to their ability. Every time they are doing things, they are always awakened to their ability. When things don't go their way, they say, ah, I think there is something I'm not doing right. When things go their way, they say, hey, I think there's something I'm doing right. When you're still conscious of what you can do right for things to work, and conscious of what you do wrong for things not to work, you're still under the ability of merit. When you shift your eyes and spirit from what you can do, and even when success comes, you're ready to re- realize in your spirit that it is not you but him. Every time you start thinking like that, David says that man is blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. Amen. Even as ministers, sometimes some things happen and you're like, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> Ooh, I think it was this first. I think I overfasted. This is why the power is moving. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if I fasted like this and power moved, ah, yeah, let me increase fasting. God dealt with me years ago on that, and I'm going to share my little story here. Don't laugh at me. There was a time I went in a meeting. I was prepared for a meeting, and then, many years ago, and then I fasted and prayed, God, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You know when you're ignorant? (laughs) When you're ignorant of the things of the Spirit, you err, right? In the way of the Spirit. And there's a way God deals with you when you're ignorant. eh? He, He deals with you as an ignorant man, right? And those songs we used to sing, they were still ignorance. Because you can't say, God prepare me to be a sanctuary. You are a sanctuary. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says that your body is the temple of God. That means you are a sanctuary. Lord prepare me. You are prepared to be a sanctuary. You are the sanctuary of God. Pure and holy. Ah, You are pure and you are holy by God. Tried and true. You are tried and true. Are you hearing me? So I fasted and then I went in a meeting. And then God moved mightily. And then I said, now, eh? if I can fast for only these days and the Holy Spirit moves, eh? this time I'm going to die fasting. The next time they called me for a bigger meeting, this one I said, if I probably have fasted this level, let me double the fast. I doubled the fast. I entered the meeting even when I was a bit dizzy. And then I said, raise your hands up in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Rabba Sakalaba Yende Kosaya. Holy Spirit. I said come. I think you don't understand me. You could not have I think there's something in the air. I started addressing the air. Man. I said, Holy Spirit, this time. I did not fast for nothing. I say it. Fall on these people. I opened my eyes to see. And everybody was like. And and, and you know, there are some women who know how to talk without talking. That's why you can find marriages where people are quarreling, but they're not quarreling. You, you slap her. Why did you slap her? Even me, I don't know. I didn't do anything. Kumbe, she knows how to say without saying. Of like, okay, mm-hmm, you've called Holy Spirit. Okay, we are waiting. Uh-huh. <laughs> but they didn't say it with their mouth. But they are whole body. Who bears a witness? That's why it's very easy for women to pick a fight. Very easy. For us men, it's hard. But it's very easy for women to pick a fight. Because she can look at her friend and abuse her in just seconds of rolling eyes. Woo. She has already placed her. <laughs> anyway, many years ago, many, many years ago. And then I went, after the service, eh, I went in my room. Eh, like, with me and you. Eh, we have a lot. You know those things of scaring God? Eh? If you don't move, I won't preach again. Mama. <laughs> okay. 
He will look for another one and still move through them. Because God is not emotional. He's revelational. If his emotions should fall on you, should come out, they would still be moved by revelation. Revelation precedes emotions in God. Do you understand? Many years ago, so I went in the room, I closed the, the door. But that day, I didn't even have appetite. I said, now you're going to tell me, why did, it, why did you ashamed me? <laughs> they advertised many years ago, many, many years ago. He didn't answer. I'm not going to serve you. Then you say, ah, but anyway. <laughs> whom, I, whom, whom do I have in heaven? But you walk, I'll serve you. Ah, I'm sorry for being funny also. Then a few days later, I was still in campus. A few days later, I heard him so audibly. He told me, you always forget that it's not in your ability that I fit myself into. Because your ability is too small for me to fit myself into. He told me, Grace Gregor, if you want me to move in your life, understand grace. And some people think we preach grace just like a doctrine. No. No. It is deeper than just a doctrine. That's why they say Jesus. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. He told me, if you want me to move in your meetings, if you want to work with me, here is the deal. Understand grace. Understand that you're not, you don't have the right to move me in the meeting because you, you want me to move. But you have the right to move me in the meeting because I want to move. I am your righteousness. I am grace. I am I want to move more than you ever want to move. But every time I want to move in your meeting, you're always ascribing to your abilities, not my ability. Because at the end of the service, it means you're going to walk, go walk back with a spring a little in your legs and you're saying, yeah, that's me, baby, that's me. You understand? And you see, God is not disturbed with you saying that's you. But he requires a maturity of understanding that I am the vine. And you are the branches. He says, without me, you can do nothing. As long as the Lord lives, and this is a truth, from that day, there is no meeting. God has not moved in my life. Never. In fact, for those of you who know me, even if I say, let him move now, he will move. That's what they call the operation of grace on a Christian. That's what God wants. You see, some people don't understand. You see, the problem with the, many of the imitations in the spirit, many imitations are so physical, not spiritual. First Corinthians 11 verse 1. He says, pattern yourselves after me. Follow my example as I imitate and follow Christ the Messiah. Now here is the challenge. The Bible didn't say, follow me as I follow and pattern myself after Jesus. He says, follow me and imitate me, even as I imitate Christ. There's a difference between Jesus and Christ. He's one and the same, but the name is in the man, Christ. The spirit is in the entity, Christ. Am I making sense? Jesus was the earthly representation of the Christ. Christ existed in the spirit before the physical existence of Jesus. So when, when he says you shall, they shall name him Jesus, he, before they name him Jesus, he is the word. He is Christ, the rock, from which they drank. The Bible says in the Old Testament dispensation, men drank from him. He was that rock. He was the cloud. He was the fire. He existed before. That is why one man refuses to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. Esteeming, he says, Christ's greater riches than the glory which was in what? In Egypt. 
Because he says he had this, he had respect until the recompense. He says, let, let's go back to the 25th. Yes, says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. Uh-huh. Esteeming, the Bible says, the reproach of Christ. He saw Christ. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You know what? Moses saw Christ before he came in the body to be Jesus. Are you with me? The patterns of the spirit here Paul describes. He says, are you patterning yourself after? And he patterns himself with Christ, the spirit man. Imitations are not physical things. Jesus doesn't want us to function the way Jesus functioned on us. Jesus wants us to function the way the Christ functioned on the earth. Because the Christ, the word there for Christ, is the anointed one. In other words, pattern yourself after the anointing. Understand the patterns of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Understand the patterns of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because when you understand the patterns of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it is the only way. In fact, the understanding the patterns of the Holy Spirit is the true distinction of a man which is instructed in the things of God. That's a man instructed in the things of God. That is why when God starts to teach Moses about the gospel and everything, and Moses understands it, the Bible speaks of him which had the understanding of the things which were afore to be revealed in Christ. In other words, when, when, when Moses was walking the surface of this earth, he was walking as a man who was doing everything that should be preached later. Hebrews 3. Right? He says that Moses certainly was faithful in the administration of God's house, but was only, not on, but was only as a ministering servant. In his entire ministry, the Bible says, he was, listen, he was, the whole entire ministry, his whole entire ministry, he was but a testimony, the Bible says, to the things which were to be spoken. That is the revelations to be given afterward in Christ. That means that everything on Moses, later on when you enter Christ, you make sense. Paul is talking about the righteousness uh, that is of faith. He says it speaketh on this wise. He quotes Deuteronomy, which Moses spoke. When Jesus wants to teach about himself, he begins from Moses. He says, and beginning with Moses, he expounded all the things about himself and the rest of the prophet. All the things that concerned him. Where did he want to begin from? He had to begin from a man whose, whose life and spirit was patterned after a testimony of the things that should be revealed in Christ after. That means that everything you do, when you're patterned in the Spirit, when men look at it, they see the ministry of Christ. And you minister in the future. Come on. Somebody say, that's me. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. Say, that's me. In the name of Jesus. Say, I carry something in my spirit that is a testimony of revelations to be given afterward in Christ. Say amen. And I realize that grace is not just a doctrine. It's a pattern. When I understood that grace and the righteousness imputed. You know those days where you say, ah, I think God is not going to move today. Why? I lied at lunchtime. Ah. So what does that mean? It means your best is back on you not lying. For God to move that day. And how selfish. That means you're subjecting the future of a woman suffering with cancer on your life. That because you lie there, for God won't heal cancer. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That is selfish. To say, oh, now God, I don't think you're going to move in my life because I lied during lunchtime. Whether you lied during lunchtime or not. God is not going to stop getting cancer out of a woman because you lie during day. He's mature than that. He's not a baby. Oh, God is not going to do this because I did this. Oh, God is not going to do this. Oh, so that means your God, you've gone back based on performance. In other words, God is going to be responding to your performance. 
and he tells you, with that kind of performance, no flesh shall be justified. You will never be right. Every time you get conscious to your ability, you will surely fail. Because you're trusting the arm of flesh. You're trusting what is inside your flesh, not his ability by the Spirit. So whether you're right or wrong, base your righteousness on who he is and what he has done in your life, not your ability. You know they used to tell us when we were growing up, if you do this, God will do this. If you don't do this, God will do that. And I understand what you're saying. Okay? You reap what you sow. That's the truth. But what is sown by scripture? Seed. What is seed? Look at 11. The word. That news is too good to be true. Because every time you say it and bring freedom in the spirits of men, many people say, ah, I think he's telling people to do this. They assume. It's them assuming. But I'm teaching from the Bible. I'm interpreting scripture. So somebody say, why is it that we have scarces in our family? Oh, the women in our family, they don't get married. Oh, the men in our family, they don't get married. Oh, the people in our family. The men, I was in Botavika just two days ago. We were working with a certain woman praying for somebody. And we intercepted a nurse who told us there is a family. The whole family is schizophrenic. They have been in Botavika since they were children. And they've grown up and they're old. They're, in their, they're going into their 50s. In fact, the one of the boys killed his mother. I said, what kind of thing can happen to a family? And people have issues in their own families. Yeah, many people, if you enter their families, there are issues. But when you become born again, God says, blessing is substitute curse. For he that knew no sin became sin. He became that curse on the tree. Do you know what it means for Christ to become a curse? It means every time a curse directs itself at you, it will remember Christ became it. There is no more room for curses in the New Testament. It doesn't mean people don't have them. No. It only means we have to teach until every man is free. You will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. For us, they don't bewitch us. I always tell people in Panero, they don't bewitch us. Oh, I'm suspicious. My sister-in-law did this to me. Let her do it. Let her do it. Let her do it. Let her do it. You lose sleep because they're going to bewitch you. Oh, I'm going to bewitch you. You tell them, how can I help? How can I help? Do you need a back cloth? I can buy you the back cloth that bewitches me. Why? Because greater is he which is in me than the devil in the world. You fear because you don't perceive. I say you fear because you don't perceive. Oh, master, they are going to kill us. Look at the thousands of the army that are on our side. And there is a man of God relaxed, fully persuaded that many more are at his side. You fear because you don't see. Fear is a sign of a man who doesn't see. That's how you know that a man doesn't see. They fear. Because that means they can't tell what is going to happen. But when you start walking in the spirit, that is why you read the words. He says this word has eyes. It is a discerner of things. He says the spirit of truth. He says he will show you things to come. Why? Because every time you read the word, you see yourself in the scripture. And you say, oh, and as I behold like in a mirror, the glory of God. He says you start being transformed and translated. Why? Because you're looking into the perfect law of liberty. That's the scripture. I can tell your future by what you feed on. I said I can tell your future by what you feed on. What you feed on determines your future. If you feed on something that kills, hey, listen, the man told you, the letter killeth. Why, why, why would a man continue listening to something that kills? He says the letter kills, but the spirit giveth life. If he told you the letter kills, for as surely as the day is, the moment the letter is read to your spirit, 
you're killed. And I wonder how somebody ascribes to the letter to something that kills. When there is an option of the blessedness that comes with understanding that the righteousness that I carry on my life is by faith in Christ Jesus. Why? Because they have mastered the art of scaring people. <laughs> you know people like that. Eh? You! You're going to see. One time I heard a dear preacher on radio and she said, you know why people attend big meetings and people go in some meetings? It is because they, they, they want to hear things that are good only. It is not so. If you've attended these big meetings, there are rebukes too. There are rebukes too. But they still come. Because they still see the end of love in it. They see the power of redemption even in the rebuke. They know God is on their side, whether they are evil or not. That is what we want to make people feel, that even if you're the worst sinner in the world, when you come in the presence of God, feel His love. Jeremiah, I want to show you something very important. 23, verses 3. Give me the amplifier. He says, I will gather the remnant of my flock. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. He says, I will gather the remnant of my flock. And he says, out of all the countries to which I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds and pastures, and they will be what? What happens when he gathers them? Answer me. What happens when he gathers them? They will be fruitful and they will what? Multiply. That's the sign that you're in the right ministry. That's the sign that you're in the right ministry. You start to become fruitful and you start to multiply. How many bear witness? Look at those hands. You start to be fruitful. How many of you, the moment you understood grace, your ministry changed, your business changed? Put up. I was sharing with somebody the other day. I told them, look, we have couples in Fanero. Eh? I was telling him, 99.99% of the couples in Fanero. 99.999. They've never brought him issues. He abused me. We quarreled. What? Uh -uh. Testify, couples, put up. They might think I'm lying. When you meet grace, your marriage must be restored. Why? Because you look at your wife with grace. You deal with your husband with grace. He's funny, but you deal with him in grace. She's annoying, yes, but you remember how God loved you. You find yourself loving her. Years ago, a guy came and told me, uh, Apostle, my wife, eh? She's, she nags. I asked him, have you told her? Yeah, I told her you nag me. <laughs> I told her then you're the problem. He said, what do you mean? He said, you're the problem. He says, likewise husbands, love your wives, even as Christ, it's in Ephesians, has loved the church. I think five, eh? Begin from, I think, 25 or something. 525. Husbands, love your wives, even as what? Christ also has loved the church. And what? Gave himself for it. What does the next verse say? That he might what? Sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You wash her with the word. She annoys you, you tell her, oh, you're a very joyful woman, I like you. She annoys you, you tell her, no, you're so beautiful. I like when you're happy. Even when she's angry, you tell her, oh, I have that smile. Cleanse her with the word. Tell the man next to you, Cleanse her with the word. That is how Jesus dealt with the church. They are funny. He tells them you're the righteousness of God. They are failing. He tells them you're the blessing. He tells they are failing out. He's saying you're the perfection of beauty in Zion. You're more than conquerors. You are above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. They are funny. But he's still cleansing them. 
with the word. I told him, I told him, fix yourself. Leave the woman alone. He went back home. Started telling her, wow. You're wonderful. She talks badly to him. He tells him, oh, I love your talk. They are happy. They are happy. Tell your neighbor, impute righteousness. Cleanse with the word. Somebody's failing. Jesus comes and says, you will make it. That is how... Now, many people are saying, now listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dispel silly teaching. You know, many people have this saying of, God is coming with, for a church without the support of Orinco. So if you have a spot on you, if you have a ring on you, they put now the power on you again. Read the next verse. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any other such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So how does a church be holy without blame, without spot nor wrinkle? He cleanses it with a word. He doesn't demand its performance. He demands its yielding to his performance. Do you know why I'm going to heaven? You know, I was telling, the other day I was on my bed and I got this wonderful revelation. As, you know, I love meditating through the word because it's instruction. When you meditate through the word, you grow very fast. I was meditating. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this and told me, grace is the only guarantee that a man will go to heaven. The only guarantee. If a man removes grace from him, it doesn't matter how good that man is. I worry he might not make it. Because no man is justified by the law. The Bible says by the law, no flesh shall be justified. Only grace can justify you. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So I learned, I'm learning every other day to cleanse everything. I'm learning to cleanse everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, because, let's go in Jeremiah. There's something wonderful I want to show you. It's getting deeper now. You know, when I'm in Fanera, I try to speak simplicity. Because some of you have this eh? And we need to work together. I hope we are all understanding. Eh? Now, he says, I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries to whom I have driven them and I will bring them again to their folds and pastures and they will what? Be fruitful and they will multiply. And the next verse says, and I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them and they will fear no more. You see, you, you see, you see what happens with the shepherds? God appoints, they remove fear out of you. They don't put fear in you. Give me the Amplified. Well, that's in verse. He says, uh, uh-huh. He says, I'll set up shepherds over them. Who will feed them? And they will fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither will they be missing or lost. When God appoints shepherds preaching their grace, there is one thing. You can't get lost. You can't go missing. You cannot be dismayed. You stop to fear. Because the ministry of Christ is not supposed to be a ministry that imparts fear. The ministry of Christ is supposed to be a ministry that imparts love. It's not supposed to be. Some of you enjoy being scared. Now you. Next week. You are in trouble. You did this last week. God is going to cast you in a pit. Of fire. So they enter church when they're trembling like this, yeah? And then we, f- we, 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 we fret their spirits and then they go back dismayed. 
Oh God, will I even make it next week? Can I be a success anymore with everything they have said? No, listen, the ministry of grace is supposed to minister love. It doesn't mean there will not be rebuke. It only means that even where there is rebuke, you will feel love. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Because fear is bondage. And it says, he that feareth, First John, is not perfected in love. Now, many people don't know the how strong that statement is. He says, he that feareth is not perfected in love. In other words, when you have a spirit of fear, you can't be perfected in God. Oh, you can't move perfectly in God when you have a spirit of fear. He says, for perfect love casteth out of fear, because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Remove love and put God, for God is love, isn't it? That means that when you move in fear, you cannot be made perfect in the things of God. The moment you start to walk in love, every time we are reminding you how much God loves you, oh, every time we are reminding you how much God loves you, what happens? You start to become bolder and you start to become perfected in love. You start to be perfected in God. He says, for there is no fear in love. When you are in love, God is love, right? There is no fear. When a man is walking in God, when we are teaching anything in God, when we are revealing anything in God, number one, there has to be no fear. Because in love, there is no fear. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. You cannot be made perfect in God when you have a spirit of fear. And this is love made perfect. When you're established in the love, when you get established in love, he that feareth is not perfected in love. But if you fear not and walk in the love of God and you're perfected, he says that herein is love made perfect, that we might have confidence. Read it there, First John 4, 17. He says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have confidence or boldness in the day of judgment, because what happens? As he is, so are we. The moment you stop to fear, you start to become like him. In everything, you release power like him. You testify like him. You do things like him. You start to function in a certain anointing on your life like him. Everything around you starts to look like him. Oh, I wish your spirits are eating this. Paul says, David says, I desired your word more than what? Necessary food. He got to a point where when he was listening to the word, he was enjoying it more than Indian food. He would rather have the word. And, 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 and I told you this year, People are going to hunger for the word like you've never seen before. This year is there for the word. Men are going to sit in words and listen and chew. And, and, and oh, why aren't you eating? Leave me. Just, just leave me. Give me a few more minutes. My mom is my witness. When I met this thing, she's my witness. She always used to call me, why don't you come and eat? The food becomes cold. I'm in my room chewing on this thing. And then I see, oh, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Ow! Then I say, Marabako, Satalayenda, Roko, Serebaya. Why? Because when you start feeding on that stuff, you become it. Are you hearing me? Some of you love food. Supper is ready. how you're supposed to be when you come into Fanero. They have to find you and they get running. Why? Because you're going to eat food. Spiritual food. When you're entering Fanero like this. When they're serving food on the wedding. Somebody say, I desire the, 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 the word. More than my necessary food. Let's go to Jeremiah. I want to show you something very powerful. Hey, next verse. And it says, and fifth verse, and it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up to David a what? A righteous branch, sprout, and he will reign as what? Who is that? Jesus. And do wisely and execute justice and righteousness. In the land. And what does the next verse say? In his days. Who? Jesus' days. Judah shall be saved. And Israel shall dwell 
safely. That's a promise. And this is his name by which he shall be called. The Lord. Our righteousness. Are you seeing how they are going to be calling him? We shall be calling him the Lord. Our righteousness. Not our righteousness. But God. No. He says the Lord. Our righteousness. He shall be called that way. Because every time you look at him. You will see yourself right. Every time you observe him, you'll see your righteousness in him shining. And he says, righteousness shall rise like the sun. And that sun of righteousness, he says, shall rise with healing in his wings. When the sun of righteousness rises, he rises with healing in his wings. That's why when you're a grace minister, healing comes easily. When you understand grace, those are my things of being sick. They start to go. Praise the Lord. He says, but I'm... To you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall grow forth and grow up. You will grow up. You will grow up and you'll grow forth. Upward, forth. Upward, forth. No backslidedness. Every other day, every minute of the hour, as you continue to listen to it, you grow up. You increase. Somebody said that's my portion. Say it. Let's go back to Jeremiah. So he says, they shall call him the Lord our righteousness. Now I need to show you something very interesting. Next verse. And he says, <clears throat> Therefore, behold the days, the Bible says, huh, are coming, says the Lord, when they shall no more say, as the Lord lives, leave story, who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt? It doesn't mean that he didn't bring them out or that there was not glory in that or that it was not a wonderful experience for them to come out of Israel. But in those days, 2016, your time, 2017, my time, they shall not say, blessed be the God who brought children out, the children of Israel out of Israel and out of the land of Egypt. He says, in that day, as the Lord lives, who br-, he says, but as the Lord lives, they say, who brought up, listen, and led the offspring of the house of Israel, he says, from the north country, and from all the countries to which I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Now, here is the mystery. Before was Egypt. Egypt is basic bondage and captivity. You used not to get money. You started getting it. You were not producing. You had children. You, were not, you didn't have business. You came. He says, in that day, they won't only say, God gave her a job. God gave her a husband. God gave him a wife. God gave him a business. God raised his ministry. No. He says, he shall be called the God who got the children from the north country. Now, when I was studying, I realized this. This was very interesting. That the Israelites, if you read Israelite history and culture, you realize that they were always oriented to face the east because they always believed that the portal that opens heaven is where the sun rises from. Primary, the sun rises from and sets to. So they always, every time they were orienting themselves, even in the spiritual things of lines of prayer, they always used to face the sun. Because they always believed that that is where the gate of heaven was. Where the light was coming from. Why? Because they always wanted to relate to the light. Are we together? Now, every time a child of God is facing the Israelites, this now is in the understanding of the Israelites, prophecy sent by Jeremiah. Now, put yourself in the Israelite setting. Every time they speak of east, right? Every time they refer to north, many times, there is a connotation that refers to the north as if a man is, this is east, this is west, this is south, this is north, right? If I'm facing the east, Which hand is facing the north country? Are we together? And which hand is facing the south country? Now, here's a mystery. In the south, the church was. How many of you know that? And how many of you know that the enemies that used to attack Israel were always attacking either from the north or the south? Why? Because it was guarded by the Mediterranean Sea and the desert. So enemies cannot come through the desert because they might be chased back and then they have trouble traveling through dry places and they don't have anywhere to go, right? And also this water might kill them. 
So usually, many enemies, even if you read the scriptures, you realize that many times, enemies either were from the north or the south. Now, if the south figuratively represents the church, and the north country, and amazingly, even some of the north country uh, interpretations also refer to Babylon, the system. Are we together? But deeper than that, Read the scripture. They won't just say that he got them out of bondage, Egypt. They will say he got them out from the north country. From the left hand. And took them south. Now, the true Hebrew translation, even of the left hand, the representations of the left hand are two. Number one, bondage. Number two, the law. So in that day, they won't only say he got them out of bondage, but they'll say he delivered them from the low country and took them to the grace country. (laughs) Isaiah 41, verse 10. I want to show you something. Isaiah 41, verse 10. He says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He says, I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Not your righteousness. When you're talking about my righteousness, it's on my right hand. When you're talking about judgment and the law, it's on the left. Judgment and the law is the left hand. The right hand is his right hand of righteousness. Every time he refers to the right hand, he's talking about his right hand of the righteousness. And where is the Christ seated? The right hand of the Father. Because every time the Christ is seated on the right, he reminds you that the righteousness is of him. I love it that he says that I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Not your righteousness. Mine. I will strengthen you with my righteousness. I will uphold you with my righteousness. I will keep you with my righteousness. I will not want your righteousness because it's as filthy rags. Let me give my righteousness to you. I will hold you. You will stand because of my righteousness, not your righteousness. No righteousness. But if you're looking for my righteousness, it's not on the hand of judgment and the law. It's on the hand of grace and love. Are you following? Are you following? Matthew 25 verse 33. Even in the separation. He says, and you shall set sheep. Where does, where does he set them? On his right hand. But the goats on the left. You see that? Because the goats are on judgment. The sheep are in love. Right? Sheep, he says, I'll gather them from the north country. From the hand of judgment. And I'll put them on the right hand. They go up fishing. And they are trying to catch. And they cast their nets on judgment. Their own ability and righteousness. And they come back the next day and find nothing. And tell them, okay, launch back into the deep. But this time when you're launching there, cast it on my right hand of righteousness. And the Bible says, and that day they got, that's why you can't be a minister and be a preacher of grace and your ministry dries up. It's impossible. If you're a minister, say it's impossible. Say it. Say it in your spirit. My ministry can't fail. Say it. My ministry can't fail. Why? Because I cast my net on the right. Say it. I cast my net on the right. My ministry can't fail. My ministry can't fail. Because it's not in my ability. It's in his hand. It's in his hand. When they will put these things in the hands of God, what is he saying? Place it on the right hand of righteousness. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember when he was talking about Nineveh? The sin of Nineveh in Joel 4? He says, I have pardoned these children. Why not forgive these people? For they know not the difference between the right hand and the left hand. They don't understand grace and law. In the days of ignorance, the Lord winks. But now he calls all men to repent. Why? Because grace has been revealed through Christ. You're without excuse. Everything that should be known of him, the Bible says, has been revealed unto them. For God has showed it and two men. And now the Bible says and now men are without excuse because the dispensation of his grace is come. You don't have an excuse to fail anymore. You don't have an excuse to fail anymore. 
Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have an excuse to fail anymore. You remember this guy, the thief? The pertinent thief? One was at the left and the other was the right. They are all scorning at him. And this guy is scorning at him. And this other thief turns to him and tells him, Don't you feel ashamed that you are, you are, you are judging a man who deserves not this? Yet you and I are on this cross because we deserve it. Aren't you ashamed? And this guy is all brawling and loathing and speaking his arcing words. And then Jesus, this guy turns to Jesus and he tells him, remember me. What did he do? Did he first remember me? Did he confess the Lord as his personal Lord and Savior? Remember me. The moment he said, remember me, Jesus told him, tonight you will be with me in paradise at the right hand of the Father. Why? Because I am accepting you not because you have been the best person in the world, but while you were at that cross, you understood that I'm with no sin, but I'm becoming sin. It's enough revelation. When you die, brother, you're with me. That man went to heaven, not because he served God faithfully. Oh, he has a hard worker. No, he lived all his life a thief, but because he understood grace on the cross, God accepted him. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. I'll probably share that because of time and we get out of here. Hallelujah. Verse 7. He says, Blessed is the man that trusts in himself. Give me the Amplified. (laughs) He says, Most blessed is the man who believes in himself. Who believes in his, his relatives. Who believes in his cousin brother. Who believes in his friends. No, he says, Most blessed is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on God. His righteousness is on God. His faith is on God. His holiness is on God. His prayer is on God. His ability is on God. He says, blessed is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord. And whose hope and confidence the Lord is. The next verse says, for he shall be like a tree that is planted by the waters that spreads out Oh, business people, ministers, married people, students, career people. He says, you shall be like a tree that's by the water, planted by the waters, that spreads out its roots by the river. And listen, and shall not see and fear when it comes. He doesn't say, oh, no. He says, he shall not see and fear when problems come. They get bad reports. They don't see and fear. They get wrong words spoken to them. They don't see and fear. They get insults. They don't see and fear. They get persecuted. They don't see and fear. They fire them on the job. They don't see and fear. They are chucked. They don't see and fear. Oh, I don't know who I'm speaking to. Whatever they do to you, you're not afraid. The government changes. You don't see and fear. The economy goes down. You don't see and fear. The stock market slump. You don't fear. You don't even see anymore. The economy becomes funny. The dollar goes up. You don't see and fear. Because you're not fit on your own ability. He says, I love the next verse. But its leaf shall be green. That means you'll be pr- fruitful. You'll be healthy. Whether the heat is up or not. Whether it is scorching. And people struggling and suffering through things. You're always happy. Always full. Always with a solution. Tell your neighbor, this year is the year. To be answered prayer. That's why I'm preaching like this. I'm preparing us for this year. The Lord told me we're launching project unchurched soon. We are going to get unchurched people in church. Make a deliberate effort and say, God, me this year, I'm bringing unchurched people. People who now you see the Muslim girl they brought. Things were sleeping on her. She was sleeping in other things. I mean, demons were on her. She was rolling on the floor like a snake. And somebody brought her here. And she was free. You promised God only 10 people. Tell him this year, God, list faith 10. And we differ from today. 
we are starting it. Project Unchurched. There are people who stopped going to church. They were believers. They were believers. Not to be making a sense. But later to just be making a sense. Hallelujah. And we shall follow them through until they become addicted. Somebody say amen. Who is on board? Put up your hands. Are you serious? So help you God. He says, it shall not be anxious and full of care. <laughs> he says, in the hour of drought, he says, no shall it cease yielding fruit, even in the worst time. Oh, tell your neighbor, that's me they're talking about right there. Don't be mistaken. That is me right there they're talking about. Say in the name of Jesus, I believe that I shall stay green. Even when the heat comes, I shall not see and fear. I shall not be anxious. I will not be full of care. In the air of drought, nor will I cease to yield fruit. Every year I'm yielding fruit. Every month I'm yielding fruit. Every minute I'm yielding fruit. I'm a success. I'm a success. Start to open it. Start to speak dangerous things. Come on, start to speak dangerous things on your life. Say I'm a success. I'm increasing. My business is going up. My marriage is a success. My ministry is a success. Everything that I do is a success. Hey! God imputes righteousness on me. Marabarabakosalaye. I cast my net on the right. I don't cast it on the left. I ascribe to his desire, his will and his grace, the working of his righteousness, the most profitable things I know, in his power and ability to do. For I believe in his ability, not my ability. Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. Come on, speak something in your life. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every word that has been spoken in your life today, it is your portion. It is your story. It is your testimony. It is your life. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You are walking out of sin. You are walking out of weakness. Poverty is not your story. Not getting married is not your story. Lack of ministry is not your story. Lack of vision and perception is not your story. I decree that you yield fruit. Even when it's heat time. Even when it's drought time. Oh, Rabatalabaye. Sarabakoyereba. Prasoroboyere. Sabakaramantoribaze. Salabarekoyarabaseleba. Salabarerebosta. Rabayelebaye. You are success. 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 You are increasing. You are multiplying. Glory is on you. Power is on you. Peace is yours. Divine health. Hey! You are walking into that office. Tomorrow morning, promoted. You are walking into that marriage. Blessed. You are walking into that ministry. With answers. You are walking into that school. With glory. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise like you believe it. Clap like you believe it. Come on, clap like you believe it. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Clap like you believe that you are the blessed of the Most High God. This week, you're entering something big. This month, you're entering something big. This year, you're entering something big. In the name of Jesus. For it is not by power, nor by might, but by His Spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Give the Lord a mighty hand of a praise. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Please don't move out. Give me one minute. We need to get people saved. You're moving out might stumble somebody to move out too. Just give me one minute for the sake of the kingdom. Let's get people saved. If you're here and you want to give your life to Christ, come and accept him today. He's free. 
Come. 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 If you say today I want to be born again, come. Stand here. Say today I want Jesus. Come on, somebody clap for Jesus. The greatest miracle. If you're tired of the law, come and say today, I'm accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. There is another person Don't refuse Don't refuse This is too good to refuse It is too beautiful to refuse Hey with my mouth that you died and rose again today I accept you in my heart as Lord and Savior Amen listen we are going to take your numbers and names we are going to be praying for you we're going to be following you up. You're going to have access to us. I give more time to these people than people who have been in the system longer, right? Why? Because they need us most. So I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest